Bakut tea has always been a very treasured dish just because it brings back very fond memories of studying in the UK. The London weather is cold and oftentimes we find ourselves yearning you know, for a bowl of hot soup. The mixture of peppercorn, of garlic and of herbs that really reminded me of the Singapore weather and of home in general. So how does one go about uh, recreating Bakut tea to really capture the essence and stay true to the memory and experience of it, yet not being completely abstract or unrecognizable to its original form. Food has been a very casual affair for a former part of the household. We would meet at our grandparents every week. It was usually uh, the elders, my aunts, my grandmother who would be cooking dishes. And us youngsters, we were more interested in really just eating food rather than you know, looking at how it was prepared or how it was cooked. <laughs> so I moved to London for three years for my undergrad studies. Uh, when I was first there, you know, cooking was really just to eat, to survive, just because you know, eating out was uh, pretty expensive in the UK. As time went on, I figured I would try and cook uh, dishes that I felt were familiar, dishes that I would think back of my favourite meals in Singapore. Hey, I'm going to go. Okay. My sugar. Sugar. During summer break, when I would return to Singapore, I would meet families, meet friends, and we would always end up reconnecting over food, trying different dishes, uh, looking at recipes, talking about you know, ways to prepare delicacies or you know, special occasion dishes. Cooking is very much essentially a form of kitchen chemistry. So the reactions that happen in the kitchen are almost similar to the ones that we learn in lectures or in class. So when I step into a kitchen, it's almost like stepping into another laboratory. What I like to do is to apply what I know in, in chemistry, in food science and fermentation, and to distill all of that to create a coherent dish. And I think what's interesting is to really use that philosophy and apply that to what we know as traditional or, or home-cooked dishes and to see if we can find a, a new spin on them. To recreate bakute, firstly, we'll need to identify the key defining characteristics of the dish. Secondly, we'll look to build upon or tweak each distinct element. And finally, we'll revisit these elements to ensure that there's balance in taste, textures, flavour and connection across the overall dish. Traditionally, there is no tea element in bakute, even though it's literally called roku cha. And the tea is usually served as a side drink. But for this recreation, I wanted to really build the tea as an integral component of it and to form a very coherent final product. So for this challenge, I knew I wanted to consult my friends at Tionghu Specialty Coffee, who are experts at coffee roasting and flavour tasting. And this is very similar to the kind of experiments that we want to run for tea extraction and to create the bakute. This is actually really very nice. The notes are all coming through. During the tea cupping session, we sampled different teas, including jasmine tea, pua. And we found that the tea kuaning oolong had a very nice complexity that we thought would complement the pork and the final dish. What I'm doing differently this time around is to use Tsinghua ham and dried shiitake. So these ingredients are rich in umami compounds which bring about a more savoury flavour to the broth. Traditionally, I think bakote has always been very hearty or heavy on the palate. So this time around, we're applying a different approach and we're going to the consomme. To achieve this, we will use pork and chicken paste. And what happens is that as the paste cooks, it forms a net. And this net traps all the impurities and scum and remove them from the stock, resulting in a clear broth. Lastly, we will steep the consomme with herbs and spices to infuse or to perfume it with flavour, as well as Sichuan peppercorn for its hydroxy central compound. This compound imparts a unique numbing sensation, which is not typically encountered in bakote. So we have chosen the Kuaning Oolong to marinate 
with the pork. And then we'll seal the pork over a cast iron skillet to brown it. And this browning is characterized by Maillard reactions, which happen when sugar and amine molecules react together to give roasty, nutty, and caramelized flavors. Lastly, we'll be smoking the pork with taekwoning tea leaves. And this will impart a different dimension of roasty and smokiness to the pork, almost reminiscent of Chinese tea in itself. All these steps will help to improve the texture and overall flavor of the final product. Hello. Hello. So this is bak kut teh. Bak kut teh. Ah, ting ting. Ah, tong de. Ah, rou kut ta bu yang. So, ah, na yi kai rou to pay yi dian tang. Ah, na zhan yi dian na ge tang ou zi. Gan na zi zi. I think cooking is really about building a dish and to create something with your own hands, transforming raw ingredients into cooked flavors that we really love and enjoy. I think it's only through constant introspection and exploration that we're able to progress and to preserve our food heritage. <laughs>